Okay, I talked to you the other day about injury and how to sort of like think about it, the bigger picture. I had an injury, like a little bit of plantar fascia, like on the heel, really irritating because you can't go anywhere. You can't walk without, if you can feel, I can feel it when I'm cycling. I can definitely feel it when I'm running. So I had to back off. And then as I, as I told you, you've got to look at the bigger picture. In the training schedule of 12 dedicated weeks, which is after you get in fit, how much of that does really matter if you have to take a little niggle, a little, you know, back step in order to gather yourself and then move forward and in the biggest picture that has literally taken five six days days to heal now that's different how it as how it used to be for me I would be in panic zones oh no what I'm not going to hit the PB I'm not going to break the record I'm not going to win the race that all those thoughts come in have I done too much is it at the right time of the kind of schedule can I actually get this back and then what you try to do is you try to get you try to train too quickly too soon so you don't let your body fully recover and you think you're okay and then you go and test it and then you're on the back foot again and then it's another six days or two weeks out if you take the biggest step picture like today i feel like i was on the bike i could feel it a little bit towards the end so i know that that's way better than the other day when i went out and i could feel it quite a lot at the beginning so i know that it's improving so the old me would would literally be okay right tomorrow i'm going for a run i'm super excited because i love running i love getting up in the morning i love like i love going to my drug and i, I absolutely love running and i would run and then all of a sudden i'd be get a four five k and i think oh, it's a, i can feel it a bit but and then i'd push on six seven k to be able to really feel it and then i'd be back to back to zone one what is it back to square one and um zone one and then and and, and so you'd kind of like elongate a little problem because you didn't have the pay because I didn't have the patience and you've done this as well because you don't have the patience because of insecurity because I, you're so focused on that marathon on that 10k on that 5k that you're, fo you, you're training towards right now I was so focused on races that I, I was scared that my competitors were getting ahead of me when in actual fact the only person you need to focus on is you you need to present your best self on that day in order to make the start line it's so funny, but if you think about it, and if you if you look, okay, for the next, let's say five, 10 years, how many races are you gonna do? How many races are you gonna train towards? How many challenges are you gonna set yourself? How many targets are you gonna put in, in place? If you can get to the start line of all those, and some people are super robust, so they never get injured, and that's just a blessing, it's genetics, it's hard sort of muscles, ligaments, etc. cetera. Um, I saw somebody who'd done a thousand races the other day, and this was the second time he was injured. I th think it's that is a genetic gift. But if you're pushing it, and you're giving yourself the, the best possible chance to run records, you naturally, it's gonna be part and parcel of the game. So you need to know when to take a step back and just say, right, okay, be patient, let this properly heal and then go again. And in the meantime, if you can do some cross training that doesn't affect it, like you can go on the indoor, indoor cross trainer, indoor skier, rowing machine, fine. Or if you go and go on the, cycle, uh, on the bike, of the cycle, uh, then that's, keeping your aerobic system in tune, probably keeping your muscles in tune a little bit as well. Hit the gym as well and don't sort of like aggravate the area. Take a step back and just say, right, what do I need to do now to get to the start line? It's never a straight line. It's never a straight line to start the training, to get fit and to, and to then the dedicated 10, 10 weeks and then a two week taper, the dedicated 12 weeks. It's never a straight line. And there's always gonna be Curveballs, there's always going to be obstacles that you need to navigate in order to try to make as many start lines as you can. And if you think like that, for me, it got to the point pretty quickly that the training was the hard part, and it absolutely is. The race is just the celebration. So if I made the start line, what that does to you is you're not nervous because you're absolutely buzzing that you've made the start line. You're, you're actually, you're, you're approaching that as, as, with the level of excitement as if it's the party, which it absolutely is. So you get there and you can cut, you've been on the start lines of major marathons, you can cut the tension with a knife and you're there like, yes, this is going to be awesome. And you kind of come with that energy, which your only job then is to kind of rein that in and to keep disciplined in the first half, if it's a marathon, for instance, to keep the handbrake on so that you can let rip in the second half and hit that PB. But just realize that it's the amount of stat lines that you make. If you think about, I've talked about Ronnie O'Sullivan quite a lot on this channel, but one thing his sports psychologist says, which is anybody can take into any aspect of their life, is Ronnie wanted to quit his snooker at, at one point. He, he's achieved everything. He's 47 years old, been in snooker since he was 12, uh, beaten professionals since he was 12. He's got nothing left to prove, he's got nothing to, left to win, but he still loves the game. But he, he was at a point where he wanted to retire, and he spoke to Steve Peters, and he said, I just... Uh, I, I just want to retire. Why do you want to retire? Because I, I'm just not having fun at 
with it anymore. Fair point. And so Steve Peters asked him, when do you have fun? And he said, I have, the only time I have fun is when I'm playing exhibition matches. Why is that? Because I just play risky shots. I have fun with it. I'm trying to entertain the crowd. I, that's when I'm having the most fun. And Steve Peters brilliantly said, why don't you approach it like that? So there's no nerves building up. There's no, uh, you know, anxiety, which has, has, has um, led Ronnie on all sorts of different paths in his life. But it's just that freedom to be the artist that he absolutely is, together with the science and the maths that comes with snooker. But you just be the artist and play. And who's going to win? You're going to win because you, you, you have total freedom. There's no anxiety or little anxiety. The crowd are going to win because they get to see fantastic snooker and the snooker as a whole wins because snooker without Ronnie O'Sullivan is nothing. So everyone wins if you take away that anxiety and that pressure and you have fun with the game again. And he's since, and this is like 10 years ago, he's never been more successful than he is now. And so if you take that to your running game and just realize, okay, you need to dig in because you need to do the homework or you will be found out on race day. It doesn't matter whether you're running 1500 meters or whether you're running hundred K, you'll get found out on race day if you haven't done your homework. Now, if you want to get there and just, you know, trot round and just, have, you know, speak to your friend along the way, that's fine. But if you want to get there and you're trying to set up a new personal best or you're trying to do a cutoff time or you're trying to get the very best out of your body, the training is going to be hard process. But of those weeks, 10 weeks, as I said, dedicated, there's only 10 long runs and 10 interval sessions, which are really the hard work. The rest of it should be you going out and doing a recovery run or an easy run and just being in your own headspace, just meditative. Uh, and maybe thinking about, okay, my work day ahead. Maybe thinking about problems you've got in your life and how to solve those problems. Maybe thinking creative solutions for something, new ideas. That, that is just you in the nature or around your neighborhood just having fun, recovery runs, easy runs, holding yourself back, it's a discipline to go easy so that you can really hit it on interval day or long run day so that you get that super compensation ready to really hit it, but make the start line. The amount of times that I've not made the start line when I was in peak condition three weeks before the race and I've tried to be greedy with fitness, tried to do an extra session, and, and then kind of, I've literally torn my calf, I've done a hip flex, I've done a quad, and looking back, you've obviously got 20-20 vision and it's so obvious that I shouldn't have done the sessions that I did that didn't allow me to get to the start line. But what I, and that's really learning the hard way because it's hard to cope when you think you're going to the world championships and you, your aim is to win and become world champion and realize all your dreams and that gets taken away from you because you're an idiot. That's really tough to deal with, but you learn a, few, a couple of things. Don't be greedy with fitness, because if you're on the start line and you're 80%, you're a competitive mother, and the likelihood is that you're gonna be there or thereabouts on the race, because there's nothing in you that's gonna to wanna to come 10th. There's nothing in you that's gonna to wanna to come fifth. It's either all or nothing. So you're either gonna win the race or come last. That's, that's fine, or drop out. But at least get to the start line so you have those options within the race. So you learn that, and then you realize that if you've kind of all your dreams on the world championships and winning that gold medal, representing your country and being the world champion for Great Britain, and you mess it up because you're an idiot, that's hard to deal with, as I said. And therefore you realize that if I can deal with that, I can pretty much deal with anything. And so that's a life lesson, but don't be hard on yourself with, you think about, always think with injuries, risk reward. What, what would I do today? Do I really feel ready for that session? And what's the purpose of this session? If it's a recovery run, and you're willing to go out there and just walk and test whatever it is the problem was, whatever the niggle was, and you've got the discipline not to run if it's really, if it's starting to hurt, and it won't just be, 100, it's hurting, it will be five, it's hurting a little bit, I can feel it, I, 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 problem, yeah? So have you got the discipline and have you got the confidence in your own ability to back off, give yourself the patience to, have the patience to give yourself the time to recover and then make the start line? That takes experience, but please learn it from me. It's so much easier than learning the hard way.